It's stealing Santa time. I need to make a present for it. What I thought I'd do is see if we can upgrade this humble big pen into a silver bodied one, keeping the cap, the tail and the actual refill. Just making a simple silver tube to replace this cheap plastic one. For that, going to need to start with about 120 grams of silver. There'll be less in the actual pen because I plan to cast it and drill it out instead of turning a sheet and then trying to solder it up. Now I noticed on these channels on, on YouTube everyone has fancy CAD diagrams so I did one up myself. So this pen is 135 mils long the hole in the middle is 3mm, but it can be no wider than 4 at the tip and 5 at the base to fit those two pieces in. And the hexagonal shape is 8.2mm across the widest part and 75 across the smallest. How hard could it be? We're about to find out. So to cast this... I was going to sand cast it, but then I had another idea of an electric furnace and I also managed to get my hands on a 20 mil uh, graphite rod. So the plan is to try anyway, before I go down the sand casting route, is to drill a 10 mil hole down the center of that, pour or melt the silver into that cavity, let it cool off, it should slide out with a bit of luck and then I've got a nice clean blank that I can machine or attempt to machine. Again, we'll see how all of that goes. Bit of an unusual setup. I'm actually uh, repurposing the fume extractor that I use on the fibre laser uh, to try to capture as much graphite as possible. As the stuff's really conductive, so I'm trying to avoid spreading it all around the workshop. Ah, oh, it seems to be working well. That should pretty well do it. So here's the plan. Got the electric furnace, turn that on, heat it up to a thousand degrees. Put in a crucible as normal, but this is just to catch any spills. So what I'll do is I'll rest the one that we just drilled out in the middle with the 10 mil hole. This is the one we want to create our um, ingot in. And I took a smaller crucible, uh, ceramic crucible and drilled a, a hole in it that I can then place in the middle. I can now place bits of silver in there and it should melt through the hole into the 10 mil void creating a tube. If I need to, I can give it a bit of extra help with the uh, map gas. So this is a silver alloy that's comprised of 95% copper, 1% germanium and 4% uh, copper. The germanium is important, it gives a nice uh, anti-tarnish coating to it after it's uh, been heat treated. Uh, the melting point for this, or the liquidus point I should say, is about 920C. So while it's saying the furnace is up to 950 now, it's going to be probably still 100 degrees under that, so it's glowing red hot on the inside, but the metal's not doing much, so we'll give it a bit of therapy. So the first load is in, now I can load up some more and repeat it. And there we go, we have our silver bar. I'll just leave that shut for 10 minutes. Okay, I think we're done. Let's have a look. Well, there it is. Looks like it uh, has melted nicely. 
Okay, let's see if we can slide it out. I can see on the top here, still a little warm, it shrunk a fair bit. Probably won't be able to see it, but it's indented a fair bit. Oh! There you go. It did slide out. But it's as rough as guts, which is what I was wondering about with multiple pores. So I'm going to put that back in there. I'll do this tomorrow and remelt it because we've now got something that fits in the mold the problem with just putting the graphite rod inside the furnace with the melt was i was having problem with shrinkage defects um, i couldn't get it to shrink uh, from one end so it was making the defects somewhere in the middle or in the top third where the hottest part of the mold was even tried torching the end that helped heaps but i still ended up with a slight defect at one end so giving up on that for now well trying a more traditional casting approach for the silver blank uh, still going to use the graphite rod that i made before but this time i'm actually just going to pour it traditionally and i've just encased the graphite rod and some petrobon so i can get a bit of a pouring basin on it i'll bring this up to melting temperature and we're just going to pour it normally and see how we go okay take two we're going to try pouring much hotter we're getting up towards 1100 Probably the melts maybe 1075 or something. Oh, if I can get my top, these cheap tongs to grip. There we go. Hey, we got a fill. Got to be happy with that. Okay, let's see what we've got. Let's get rid of some of this. Have we got something that's good enough for this pen? Oh. Right, we're going to try pouring Petrobon. This time I made up um, the mould using a bit of uh, 10 mil rod. I've made it a bit longer, so if there's something wrong at either end, I can cut it off, add it a little bit more silver. To, uh, allow for that. Well, there's the extra silver. All right, let's see what we got. There we go. Well, the good news is I've made a big nail well it's actually should be turnable so it's a bit over what i need so it's uh, about by the time i cut the base off it's a bit over 150 mils which is good um, it's also the right width at 10 mil well i've got my blank now mounted in the lathe just checking everything lines up uh, the first thing I really need to do, which I wasn't planning on doing, was just give a light um, turn down on the, um, the OD. Just get rid of those big sand, um, in, not inclusions, uh, get rid of those casting defects where the silver's bled into the, the sand towards the bottom of it. There we go, should be the last pass of making some chips. I had my tailstock get loose and wobbly and that wasn't good. Yeah, so it was a bit chattery down here, but looking better. I don't want to take too much off, just enough to clamp it. Well, here comes the hard bit. I've got to take a very small long drill bit and drill it 75 mils on that side, flip the piece over and do it again. Last time I tried this, just with a bit of aluminium, I broke the drill bit. So this is going to be long and boring, and we're going to do some pecking. To start with, I've just got a small 3.5mm drill bit in the um, collet chuck, just to, it'll be more rigid, so I can get, you know, 50mm in, um, and then finish it off with this one.
figure I'll go five mil at a time. Well, touch wood. Didn't break my long drill bit. I flipped the part over and drilling from this side now. God knows if they're, they're going to line up. I don't think they will. Well, I think we've broken through. So I've got it set up to turn between centres. I've got a dead centre at this end and a live centre at this end. No drive dog, just using pressure from the tailstock. And uh, the operation now, this is about 150 mil long. We're going to turn it down to its final OD. The final pen will be 135, but I'll turn down 140, so I've got a bit of room when I stuff something up. All right, we'll see how we go. Let's, have, let's see how it looks. Bit of chatter on it. Not exactly rigid between centres. So I'm just cutting the taper it now. Um, I'll polish it down to the right dimensions, but this will get it pretty close. Just putting that in at the end of the uh, tube stock that we um, turned before. bit more yet but it's pretty close so we'll leave it as is for now and then we can machine it later all set up to uh, mill some flats on the on the blank I've got it centered put down some paper to try to catch as much of the uh, silver chips as possible one thing I was wondering on how to do was how to index it it's uh, it needs to be a hex body I don't have an indexer so what I've done is I've just put a grub screw in one end which happens to use a hex key so what I'll do is just there you go there's position one loosen it off move it to position two and so on okay, I've done a couple of sides but let's uh, let's index it to the third one so all I'm doing is loosening the um, the vise putting this in rotating it gently till it's vertical tightening it back up can't really see much now there is a taper on this pen, uh, so I got a new lathe and uh, I didn't check the tailstock uh, properly. So there's a slight taper, so there will be a hex at one end and there will be a cylinder at the other. There you go, the flats have been milled. As I said, there's a slight taper on it, so they get shallower up there and eventually end up as just a cylinder at the top but the flats at the bottom so we're getting close to the good old polishing and buffing boy it's amazed how hot it gets and I just work down through the grits making it shinier and shinier Right, I'm also a big believer in burnishes. It saves so much time and effort. Um, you've got to like, I guess, the, the finish it gives you, but you can always give it a bit more of a polish, but it's so simple. Literally add your burnishing powder, take your item. So as you can see, it's already starting to polish up quite well. I'll block both ends because I really don't want bits of ball bearing and shot getting stuck in the, um, uh, in the bore. Close it all up. And turn it on. 
you go, been in there for about half an hour, 45 minutes. How nice does that come up? Looks pretty good. Okay, just giving it a pickle in some hot citric acid. Well, my wife's home. She won't let me heat treat it for 250 degrees for two hours in a rubbin. Um, and I've run out of time, so I can't sneak in there while she's not looking. So I'll just move to pa passivation. That brings the uh, germanium oxide to um, the surface. It's easy. It's an hour at 100 degrees centigrade. That's our tasty warm pan. We'll let it cool down. And uh, time to put some logos on it with the laser. There we go. We got it doing its thing. It's just annealing the logo into the surface. Okay, not sure how well you're going to see it but there's the logo.